We speak aloud our praises for sending his one and only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us sing together our songs to welcome him. Hosanna, Hosanna, we welcome the King with praise. We give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna is the highest. Let all those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Out of my distress I called to the Lord and he answered me. The Lord is on my side. I do not fear. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Open the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. Blessed is he who comes to save us. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. On this day that your mighty hand created, we pray to you, save us, O Lord. Together. Hosanna, save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We welcome you in this place. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the church motto is on the back of your program, if you don't know it. Um, otherwise, just say it with me. Uh, this is the Lord's Lord church, and, and Jesus is Lord. This is the church that's being established by his word. This is the church that love is building, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, ladies. Thank you. And we just want to make sure that you're feeling welcome, so we're going to have our deacon and train Natasha come in. Let y'all know. Amen. <laughs>
referees. We're going to have our announcements. By our, our, no? Okay. Well, your announcements are in your program. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Um, well, as you see, September 10th is our Family and Friends Day, where we have our family and our friends come. So please invite one or the other, or both, if you're feeling generous. Uh, October 27th through the 29th is our Dunamis Conference. Yeah. I said it's our Dunamis Conference. Explosion weekend. And those are your announcements. <laughs> Sorry about that. And now I'm going to sit down. Y'all don't have to hear my voice no more. And this, this, this young lady, she's so special. We're going to have two people come introduce her. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. We're going to have our sister T, and after that, we're going to hear from our pest. Okay, we're going to hear from our pastor first, and then we're going to hear from our sister T. And that will be a new. Amen. 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 Can we say praise the Lord, everybody? Praise the Lord. Come on, can you be better than that? Can you say praise the Lord, everybody? Amen. 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 Each one of you. I just wanted to greet all of you all today. Amen. God bless. Look at there. Look at the little baby. The last time I, I didn't see him. Amen. <laughs> so we, what, what is his name? I knew. I knew. I knew? Amen. Can we celebrate him? Woo! He has a whole lot of celebrations to come, and so we bless the Lord for uh, for him. Please listen to the announcements that were that are in your in your program, and so I just wanted to uh, celebrate each one of you. I'm excited to hear the word, Amen. Pastor Dana is off ministering, Amen. So we thank the Lord for her, Amen. So um, listen, let's hear the word of the Lord. Is that all right, yes. Amen? And if it hits you hard, say ouch. Amen. Yeah. If you agree, say amen. 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 That's what we did. Amen. If it hit, amen. And if it hit too hard, you just put your head down. Uh -huh. Amen. <laughs> and, and you prayed about it. Amen. But I want her to, amen. Bring the word of God. Amen. Because God sent his word. Amen. And healed us and set us free. Amen. So she's a great woman of God and evangelist. But at this time, amen. <clears throat> Listen, I don't have no voice. I'm not going to sing. Because last time I sang, now I got a singing engagement. Last time I sang, on that Sunday, I thought Elder Sir Jazz was having jokes. Now I got a singing engagement. So, what do we do? Let me get my Listen, I'm retired. Amen. Amen. So we bless the Lord. Come on, T. Amen. Can we celebrate, T? We love T. Amen. She's going to introduce. So I'm introducing you all to T. Amen. And then T will introduce, amen, God's messenger, amen, and God's servant, amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's an honor to introduce the woman that's been ready to praise today. Amen. Amen. Um, just for two seconds, and I want to take off your time. First, we started with the beep beep. <laughs> Come on in. Pull up with the beep beep. Uh -huh. The beep beep. Yeah. So I had the pleasure to understand and go through that section with her and her journey with the beep beep. Mm -hmm. And then the pull up. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I want to add to that was the lock in. Mm -hmm. All right. And the lock in was the fight <laughs> that she has been going through for the last 10 years that I have been in her life. Huh. Come on. Her journey. She don't do it, T. Don't do it. Her journey with her life itself. Her journey with her anointment. Uh -huh. Her journey with these kids. <laughs> her journey with me. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. The cries, the screams, the depression, the laughter, the giving up and not giving up. How about the giving up and not giving up? <laughs> you know? All at the same time. I, it's an honor.
honor for me to go through this with her. You know, with her locking in, with her fight. Um, so I'm just going to read something real quick. And then I'm going to get back to her. So, a godly woman never fails to seek God in everything she does. Chronicle, 1 Chronicle 16 11. She's strong, brave, kind, and faithful. A woman after God's own heart. Here I introduce in evangelist, minister evangelist, Melinda Capriz. Appreciate it. Hey. 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 Y'all keep that going and give God some praise. Give God praise because God is worthy. Give God praise because we saw another day. Give God praise because you're here today. Amen. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Do your best, man. It's the giving up and not giving up for me. I don't know about you. But when you follow God, you got to give up some things, right? And then you got to not give up. I'm just saying. You got to not give up on your road, but give up those things along the way that need to fall from you. So it's the not giving up and the giving up for me. Amen. Let's go to the throne of grace. Lord, we give you thanks, praise, and honor, and glory. Ooh, I do not take it lightly that I get a chance to be used as a vessel. Lord, use me and take me and mold me the way you see fit. Father God, speak through me. Take me and make me smaller and increase your light in me. You are my strength. And I thank you, Lord, for just this day. Just this day, this moment. Not the next moment, not yesterday. Just this moment, God. We thank you for this moment. Lord, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are my strength and you're my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Ooh, I just thank God for everybody being here. I thank God for the opportunity to be able to be used. Um, we gonna get right to it because this this that get together word get you together word. <laughs> How do I know? Because it got me together before I got here. <laughs> it got me together during, in between, around. And uh, I was telling my babies, it's funny how every time this opportunity happens when I'm supposed to open up my mouth and say what God tells me to say, let the challenges come. Uh-huh. I mean, they burrow down like. <laughs> they started rolling down. You ever roll down a hill and you go faster and faster and faster and faster? That's what started happening. But let me tell you something about God. God uses your circumstances to make glory. Do you know what that means? Now, you may catch that a little bit next week. But I want you to understand whatever circumstance that you may be in right now that God is going to use to make glory. To make glory. To make glory. Yeah, yeah. It's oh. the ingredients of what glory is made of. Oh my. I just great. want you to understand that because sometimes we be going through yeah. stuff and we just sit, you know, we sit in it. But God is using it as an ingredient to make glory. <laughs> to make glory. Yes, to make glory. He's, he's using it. So whatever it is, I don't care what it is. If it's learning how to, for my mother, it's learning how to walk again. Right. God uses glory. Yes, yes. God uses glory because she couldn't talk, but now she can talk. All God right. uses glory. God uses glory. Yes. And I stood up through it. That was glory. Hallelujah. See, because there was a day that I would be torn up, falling apart, and rolled all together. But this day, I stand in front of you just a little bit better. Just a little bit better. Thank you, Lord. All right, all right. Everybody, if you have your Bible or you have an app, whatever you're going to use, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians. Just a little bit. 
2 Corinthians. I love it. It's popular. I don't know if this word is going to be too popular, but it's popular. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to the first chapter mm -hmm. and the 20th verse. Um, I was taught, um, Bishop Walter Hawk has always said, if you want to know the meaning of the text, you go before and you go after. So we're going to take it from the 19th verse to the 21st verse. All right. It says, for the Son of God. Oh, stand as you are able. That's all. all right. This is out of the NIV version, I want to say, too. It says, for the Son of God. Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, is that Sylvanus and Timothy was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. All right. If you um, are taking notes and you're looking for a title, this will be entitled Promises, Promises, Promises. You can have a seat. Let's get right to it. Okay, so I did most of this writing while I was at camp. <laughs> The kids will tell you what to, what to write down the circumstances, right? Promises. So, uh, promises. Let's. I started off with looking it up. So, it can be a noun and it can be a verb. Okay, noun, person, place, or thing. Verb is an action, right? So, as a noun, it can be a declaration or assurance that one will do a particular thing or that particular thing will happen. Okay? Promise. All right? The verb is to assure someone that one will definitely, definitely. do, give, or arrange something, on, undertake, or declare that something will happen. Definitely. Baby. <laughs> All right. Now, in saying that, I just want y'all to understand that God's promises are yes and amen. amen. But see, let me tell y'all something. See, just, see, that's the party part. That's the part you that's pray that. That's the party part. We're gonna, right, we're gonna talk about what holds us back from the promises, oh my, right? Oh my God. It, 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 I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so we're gonna say, uh, first of all, I don't know why we don't understand that the promises of God are for us. Right? Did you know there are a grand total of eight thousand eight hundred and ten promises of God in the Bible? Oh, wow! Okay, and out of that. 8,810 promises of God, 7,487 of them were made to humankind. Wow. Love it. Wow. So uh, that, that should sit in your soul real well. It's kind of like when God was making heaven and earth and he looked at us and said it was real good. Yeah, real good. Real good, right? Because he had made a bunch of things, but when he looked at you, he said it was real good. So you are. Made perfect in God's image. You're real good, right? Because sometimes the devil will sneak up on you and tell you what you're not. I'm going to give you something to tell you who you are. Yes. All right? So, promises. I know, um, I think the thing for me about promises is that a lot of people break promises, right? And it's our experiences that shape our belief. Yeah. Okay? So, I want to say that. When we say promises are made to be broken, you speak that into your life. So every promise that you come across, you think is a kind of like a lie. Uh, oh, oh my. You expect it to fail. Oh because people fail you. Oh my. I fail you daily. I fail. But guess what? The God in me does not fail. The God in me shows up when I can't. Okay, so that, that's the thing. That's the thing with, with thinking about promises. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm good. You know, I'm going to be up here hot anyway. So, 
I wanted to tell you, so we build up this thing. When you have these experiences, we build well, up this wall to promises. So you can't get anything in there. So if God can scream at you, I got you, I got you, I got you. And you got 50 people around you that don't got you, so you ain't going to believe it. Evangelist. You won't believe it. Evangelist. You won't believe it. See, I'm talking about me. I mean, I was talking to me. I was talking to me. I had to call Pastor Nader and go, she said, well, that's what it normally does, baby. It gets you together first, yeah. and then you're able to deliver it. Right. So I had to go, wow. What holds us back if you're taking notes is belief. It is obedience. I'm going to tell y'all a little later on how that go hand in hand. All right? It's the timing. God's timing. Yes. Right? And it's the not being open and receptive yes. to the promise. All right? So, if we go to, let me run to uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Uh-huh. I know that. <laughs> All right. So, in Chronicles 7 and 14, it says, if my people... Yes, yes. Who are called by my name would, do what? would humble themselves. See, we got a big problem with that. Everybody want to be somebody now. It's about me and mine. I'm the top shelf. Guess what? You go ahead and be the top shelf because God said the people that are last in the line are going to be first. So you right up there if you want to. I'm going to stay back here, do the work of God, and watch the glory happen. And then guess where I'll be? I'm going to watch God's glory happen. Because when you do the work, yeah, it takes work. Yeah, the promises are not just going to come because you say, oh, God, I need. Yeah, all right. Like, you have to do the work to plow into. You have to plow into the dirt, plant the seeds, water the grass, you gotta do the work. We can say over and over again, because I'm good at this. Not y'all, me. Y'all know people because you know me. So I, I will sit and I'll be like, well, dang, this is not coming to pass, but you ain't did nothing, sis. You ain't did nothing. So how do you expect to get something? Yes, entitled, because you think the world, let me tell you something, the world don't owe you nothing. World? The world yeah, owes you yeah. nothing. If you think you're owed something, I'm gonna need you to take a back seat. See, that's the problem right there. <laughs> you you gotta humble yourself first. You yeah. gotta be willing to be crushed. Do you know what crushing does to diamonds? Do you know what pressure does to diamonds? Yeah. It purifies yeah. it. My God, my God. It clears it all up for you, baby. It, it gives you this. This clear Clarity. vision of where it Clarity. wasn't before. It yeah. clarifies the diamonds. You know how they take the little thing and they look at the diamonds? That's to see the clarity in the diamond. They can see whether it's cloudy, meaning it's average diamond, or it is the purest form. It's so clear you can see your face in it. You'll be like, Whoa, look at me at the other end of the diamond. Right. The other end. And, and, but see what it took to get that diamond there is the thing that we don't want to be a part of. That's the crushing and the making. The crushing and the making is the thing that we don't want to be a part of. We don't want to be a part of the crushing. I know it hurts. Lord knows I do. I know it hurts. But I'm telling you, medicine does not taste well. But it is good for you. It said it, it was good for me that I... Yes, yes. But I was afflicted. So I learned of the statues of God. I'm just saying, it said it was good. It was good. It was good. You don't learn nothing but stuff you already know. Come on. Jesus, it's better when I ain't got it. 
I'm just saying. Because when you don't have it, then God can do the work to get it right correctly. Then you go to your higher self, your higher power. You sit there. You sit with him and you say, guess what? Yes, sir. I don't know and I don't understand the situation, but I'm going to sit here until you tell me how to figure it out. That's it. That's it. I wake up. Lord, I'm here. And if you begin to have this experience with God, see, it's different people, church people are. I love y'all, but. I love y'all, but I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm a church person. I love that. I would say I'm the believer of God's glory. I'm the believer of God's grace. That's what I'm the believer in because that's what God has shown. You believe what you're shown. Every time I expect God to show up, mm -hmm. guess what? BB. God. <laughs> Say it again, Gigi. BB. BB. Yeah. He, pull he pull up on me. He pulls up on me. I remember we we pray for these big things. Sometimes I'll just say something in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I can use, I'm going to use you for an example. You know I probably would. So when I knew it was coming and you were at the highest point of pain, right? Baby. And I woke up and I saw you. And you look so like I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you know me, I don't play about my babies. Not one bit. No, you don't. Right. Not one bit. So I'm sitting there. We have been at it for three days. Gigi, three days. And I was sitting there. And all I said was, Lord, I am so tired of seeing her in pain. Can we please do something else? <laughs> just something else. I didn't know what the something was. I just was tired of looking at her. Look like I'm tired. So I said, God, can we please do something else? I'm telling you, she went to the bathroom and came out. We had our little. <laughs> I knew it was here in. It was like, oh, no, no, baby, come on up out of there. The nurses was running around and I knew it was coming out. He was like, I'm coming. So sometimes we think that it's a small thing to ask God to do something. But in those small things, if you have already put in the work, see, you had already put in the work. Three days work. Three days work. You had put in the work. You was tired. But I could have asked that same prayer at the beginning. At day one. I couldn't have asked for that. Because the, the product of having a baby has... Uh, it has, uh, what do I want to say? It has steps. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you have to, you got to, you got to open up far enough. You got to, the baby's head got to be in a certain uh -huh. place. You got to have a certain thing. Everything has to go in a certain order. Uh -huh. So we hadn't made that order yet. The alignment was not made yet. We hadn't came into everything we needed to Come on. at that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? Yeah. So I just want to talk about that for a minute. Let's, um. The fact that it says that we have to turn from our wicked ways. Okay, we think we don't do nothing. And I'm not talking about smoking, drinking, going to the club. I'm talking about them too, but that's not. See, sometimes people think if I don't smoke and I don't drink and I don't go to the club, I'm going to heaven. That is not what that means. That is the trick of the enemy. Do not get yourself wrapped up in that. that that's the least. God is expecting you to treat the least of the people you know the way you would treat somebody that walked in here with a million dollars. The same way. God is expecting you to give when you only got that dollar and and this person needs 75 cents. That's the character God is built. That's the character. That's the stretch. If you don't stretch to reach it, you will not get it. All right, so I would like to remind you, like, most of the time, when it comes to belief, right, mm -hmm. besides turning from the wicked ways, because if when you turn from wicked things, your channel opens up. Mm -hmm. There's an opening to your direct channel between you and God yeah. when you begin to let go of the things that don't serve you. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. You begin to hear things see things a different way, hear things a different way, move a different way. Everything becomes different 
when you begin to let go of the things that don't serve you. Man. Now, you and God is the only people that know what don't serve you. <laughs> you and God. You and God. Catch it. Now, if you don't Let catch that today, today you maybe you'll it. catch it tomorrow. Catch it. But we keep, I know for me, I keep recycling the same relationship and it does not get any better. It is the same relationship that it was when it started. It is the same relationship last week. It is the same relationship this morning. I'm just saying. And I get the same. Then I got the nerve. Wait a minute. Let it go. Let it go. Let us keep doing it. Then I get the nerve to want to act surprised when the same thing happens. You better preach. Well, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe that person did that. All in shock when it's the same person doing the same thing in the same way, so I'm getting the same results. I'm just saying. If you're doing that and you're with me, how about we, we, we come into some obedience? Okay? Because Belief and obedience, they go hand in hand. That's right. That's right. Normally, it's the inner me that stops me or us from receiving God's promise. The promise is there, but our obedience to God is the connection to the promise. That's good. Our obedience to God. Our obedience to God is the connection to your promise. I don't care if God. I don't care if God told you to go outside three days in a row and pick up that one piece of paper Listen. every day. You should be going outside and going, every let day. me get that. <laughs> because God doesn't give you an assignment without purpose. God does not give you an assignment without purpose. I don't care how small it looks, sis. I don't know why I'm talking to you. I don't care how small the assignment looks to you. There's a purpose for that assignment that he's giving okay. you. I'm going to need right. you to step out and do what he's telling me to do. I don't know, sis. That, right. That's, that's, right. that's that right there. So, if you walk into the obedience of it, the promise automatically shows up. Okay? The promise will show up. And then the glory of God comes from it. Because why would anybody believe in the promise of God that don't know God? If we ourselves don't believe. Right, right, right. And I know to yourself, you probably say, I do believe. I believe that God is and that he will be. If we believe, the reason why I keep saying we, because I'm talking about me. If we believe, then we would obey. Simple. Simple. If we believe, we would obey. If we believe we would get up that earlier 30 minutes, have that conversation with God, do your yoga, take your time for yourself. Whatever God is telling you to do, that's just what God tells me to do. God could be telling you to do something else, but you got to do it in order for the promise to happen. If you keep holding on and not doing what God tells you to do, you're gonna, you close off the door to the promise. All right? So that's how belief and obedience go hand in hand. You can't say you believe in something if you're not willing to obey. And I know we hear obedience, and that shocked us. That made us, what? Well, you know, I know. It's something so easy that God told you to pick up your phone and call that person just to see how they was doing, and you did not. And then they're not there the next day, and then you're going, oh, I should have. But God told you to. He told you what to do. He said it's time for you to move. Some things you can't take with you, so go on and leave them there. Right. Leave them there. I, I promise you, if you leave those things that you think that are important to you, that you packed and put away and tucked and everything else, if you begin to expose them and leave them where they are, God's yoke is easy. And it's burning as light. It becomes heavy when we pick up stuff that don't even belong to us. It becomes heavy. That's a different preach. Y'all can't yeah. say that. That's, <laughs> That's the next one. I don't know. 
You know, I just, I, it is very important to me. I, I'm not gonna stand here and act like I never do anything that I'm not proud of. Uh -huh. I always do things uh -huh. that I'm not proud of. <laughs> All the time. All the time. All the time. The difference in me now is that I recognize that they're not good for me and that's not good that I did it. Yes. So I, then I can begin to not repeat that same act. Wow. I can begin to not repeat it. That's the thing. That's the thing. So obedience and belief go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the timing, right? So if you're obedient, you, you got humble, and you prayed, and you asked in the will of God what you needed and for the promises, it's the waiting time that we don't handle very well. We we wait like God is not gonna show up. We go to the window. You're exposing me. We go to the window. We look out the blinds. Is God here yet? You pace the floor. Is he coming? Is God gonna show up? I feel like it's my daddy. Where is he? This is gonna hurt. Okay. He's coming. But it's the posture in which you wait. Are you waiting like, oh, maybe? Are you waiting like, uh? Are you crying? Are you are you just being mad about everything? Or are you expecting? There's there's two different things. Are you expecting? Are you going, yay, hey, God's coming? Because when you believe in something and you know oh, that it's going to come through, that's the way you should wait. Yes, sir. You yes. should not wait like you got a problem waiting. Come on. It's then they that wait upon the Lord shall yes. you their strength. You will mount upon wings of eagles. You will soar and not get weary. You will walk and never faint. They that wait on the Lord. That's what it says. But we so busy quoting and not living. It's that living thing that we got to get used to. It's the living, the waiting. Woo, because you know, <laughs> it's that making reservations knowing you ain't got no money. It's, <laughs> it's that. It's the knowing that God is going to come through because that's what he told you to do. He told you, go, go make some reservations. You're going on that trip. You, I need you on that trip because something's going to happen. Where my glory will be shown through you. I need you there. Need you there. And you go, well, oh, Lord. First of all, let's stop there. The questioning of it at the beginning of it is not a good look. It's not a good look. If you, if you start at, you don't know. Well, God. That just sounds like you giving up at the beginning. Instead of going, okay, Lord, so, uh. You said, let me go do this. Let me step out and go do it. You know, I just left the travel agent. <laughs> so I know the money going to show up in the bank some kind of way. I seen them do it. You can stand here and look at me how you want to. I seen God do it. I made reservations and didn't have a dime. I seen them do it. Not for me, but all of us. It's it's almost 15 of us that we going. And I ain't got a dime. And God showed up like, BB. Two, two, on the pull up. He was like, hey, 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 no worries. I told you I was coming. I had a few stops to make along the way. Oh, daughter, go ahead, daughter. Yeah. I had a few stops to make along the way to make the provision happen. To make the provision. Now, it could be the reason why we're not experiencing the promise of God is because I know we're not going to hear this. We're not ready. Come on, say it. We're not ready. We say we're ready, but we're not taking care of what God gave us right now. Mm. We're not fulfilling our duties in the role that God has given us right now. Right now. Why would God take the time to elevate a situation if you're not taking care of the situation you're in right now? Y'all make that make sense to me. Because I have not worked that out. <laughs> if you if you wear a pair of I wore a pair of Anything that I just bought out like I don't even know. Payless shoe stores don't even exist no more. Remember the plastic shoes that used to heat up your feet? Remember those? No, no. Nah. It's worse than that. They were supposed to be leather. Just eat you up. 
Hey, hit your whole foot up out in the heat. I know, don't. We'll talk about that later. All right? It, it hit your whole foot up. You just think the cheapest thing going. But baby, when I tell you when I was in the mosque, I had them white shoes every Sunday Come morning. On. I would take the little, I would take the little black marks off of them baby. with a little alcohol. Uh -huh. I would drink my little diaper wipe and I would clean that spot out my white uniform. And where were you going? And I was going straight to the mosque. I was going to be there. I was going to be on time too. I was going to make my little shoes look like the, the shoes on the Nexus that she probably spent two or three hundred dollars for, but mine was clean. So I was just happy to be standing next to the $300 pair of shoes. You feel know I me? Mean? I just wanted to be, I just wanted to be where God wanted me to be. Oh, y'all don't think God could have wanted me to be here? Yeah, God wanted me to be there for this moment. Uh -huh. Get that. I had to go there to get here. Sometimes you don't want to go there to get here. You want to jump over there and just get here. Well, let me tell you what happens with that. If you jump over, you neglect the experience that you were supposed to have in order for you to be successful over yeah. here. Handle it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, because if you wasn't handling them little uh, 1999 shoes, <laughs> no, right. two for 20, right, they was hot too. I'm just putting that back in. There. If you wasn't handling them, Hey. There were no new pumps. The new pumps didn't come. And if they did, you didn't take care of them, and I don't have them no more. I'm talking about me. I might not, y'all might not experience nothing when God then told you to take care of something, and you Lord. don't take care of it, Lord. and then you come along, and you think that you got what you asked for, and then you get what you asked for, and before you know it, it's gone. I'm sorry, brother. I'm not sorry, brother. I'm not. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone because you didn't pick up the tools along the way to be able to fight the battle that was ahead of you when you wanted to get here. You were supposed to pick up some things along the way that allowed you to be able to handle here. Here. Over there. Go on. Go on. I'm connected. Right? So it's like, Lucy, it's like when we say that we perfect the dance, right? There are stages in perfecting that dance, right? First you learn it, then you do it again and again and again and again and again and again. And then what do I say? And do it again. <laughs> and do it again. But by the time you get to the stage, it's showtime. You have all the energy you need. You know the moves. You got the muscle memory. You just in it for the fun, buddy. Yeah, it's yeah. That's where God tries to get us yeah. to be in it for the fun. Whoa. It's fun when God's glory show up. Yes, yes. It is fun. I see it all the time. I get the front row seat. I see yes, him yes. do it all the time. I see him every time. I see him do it, and I can sit there and giggle. Sometimes y'all be thinking I'll be crazy. I'll be laughing at something. I'll be laughing at God showing up the way he yeah. said he was going to show yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's because we took care of over there mm -hmm. to get over here. Now, what else may be the thing is that we don't realize that God's days are not like our days. Mm -hmm. He'll say, I'm going to get to you in a minute, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> you can pray for stuff. I, I got stuff that I prayed for when I was 12 just now happening. You don't think I started praying for my family to be healed when I was in the molestation? I started back then. I started praying, God, let this be over. I cannot handle this. I don't want to feel like this anymore. There is a problem with this. Yeah. This is not the way it's supposed it to be. If there's a God out there, help me. My God, at 12. At 12. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I Lord. want to let you know, I just got free of that last year. Yes, yes. That's good, man. So if you think that you're waiting for something, wait. 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 Ah. Yeah. wait. Because what God has for you is unimaginable. It does not even exist in our thinking what God has for us. He's in the scripture. 
It does not. God has been set up for you already. Before you got to this earth, before you were born, when you were in your mama womb, when he was born, yep, I'm just going to be a light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm just going to carry a lot. Yeah, and I'm going to give her the strength to do it. He said that every time she moves her arm, people going to feel a feeling. Yes. He said every time she turns her head and she smiles, it's going to light up her room. He knew that before he made you. It's just that we think the things sometimes that God gives us are burdens. They're not. They're to make the whole plan better. <laughs> I know we say uh, that it works for the good of them. That love. No, it's for the good. So it's the good of the whole picture that God is working those things out. So sometimes it might hurt a little bit, but it's because God is making the plan come together. And everybody don't see the plan. <laughs> and even if they see it, if it ain't in their favor, they're not going to help get you there no way. That's, that's anyway. thing. Okay. So the good. fact that we not be may not be ready and his days may not be like our days, then we have to be. I want to give y'all another scripture. Lord. Let's go to Second Thessalonians three and three. Yeah. <laughs> Second Thessalonians 3 and 3 says, But the Lord is faithful. Mm -hmm. yeah, faithful. <laughs> faithful. Who will establish you and guard you from the evil one? Guard you. Guard you. That means no matter what they do, that promise that he got coming before you, it's going to come. It's nothing that anybody else can do about it because he covered you from the beginning. He established the promise from the beginning. All you got to do is be there and be available to get it. Yeah. Now, if you don't believe it and you're not obedient and you don't open your hands to receive it, that's where the problem was. <laughs> it says he will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we will have confidence. Uh -huh. In the Lord concerning you. Both that you do and will do the things that we have commanded you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. See that's the thing. A lot of us we go and we seek to go out in this world to do things for ourselves. Mm -hmm. That ain't why God put you here. Wow. You worry about other people and let God worry about you. Uh, wow. You worry about the people wow. that you see every day. You worry about the people that come across you that may need, hey, I love you today. You worry about those things. And then when I say worry, I, I, maybe that's, I'm, I'm using that word very loosely. Because it shouldn't be a worry. It should be a care. Yeah, there's a difference. There's, yeah. there's a difference. Yeah. That means I care for the things that God put in my life. If you care for the things that God put in your life, they become a blessing. If you neglect the things God put in your life, they become a curse. You're it's right. up to you. Right. You either treat them like a blessing or treat it like a curse. Because you, you cannot tell me that you believe that God gave you something that you not take care of. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we care for our babies because God gave them to us. We care for our spouse, our, our husband, our wives, our our. our Oh, we especially care for things. See, that's the problem oh. right there. We'll take care of things. Oh, my goodness. You put your shoes in the good sacks when they need good shoes, right? I take my hair off. I put it on a little wig can. I'll just say I brush it out. I take care of this. You feel me? But if you took care of those things that God gave you to take care of like that, imagine the glory that would come from that. If you took care of the things that God gave you to take care of, if you took the time to love and to care for those things the way you do for things, 
Yeah, it might take you a little extra time. No, I didn't want to get up this morning and come. But I know if I come and I sit in this service, Miss Caprice going to see her baby and she's going to be just fine standing up there talking in front of the people. I didn't want to get up this morning. I, it's one of my only days off. You know what I mean? But you care for the things that God has given you. So you begin to see things come out of it. And you show up. You show up for the people that you love. You show up. So, with me saying this, if, uh, all right, if with me saying that you show up, here's the thing. If we are going to be open to the promises of God, because they're yes and amen, here's the thing. We have to understand that it may come in a form or in a way or from a person that don't necessarily look like you, talk like you, walk like you, say like you. You got to be open for that. You got to be open for that because they may come to you. JoJo do it to me all the time. We was listening to uh, uh, Lord, you are good, and you know, and she on the hallelujah part, she kept turning around at my desk, going hallelujah, hallelujah, right? And I, I wanted to catch her doing it, so I went to take her, forgetting that my phone was playing the music. Baby, if you ever seen somebody look bad because you quenched their spirit. I have the video. She turned and looked at me. She was like, I'm in this moment. Yeah. <laughs> she said, you took that from me. I said, oh, my bad. And turned the music back on. Come on. See, there's something about a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that told me, while you're busy doing this, Jesus. you're missing something. You're missing the moment. You're missing the moment. Oh. That part. We miss the glory of God trying to capture the glory. The glory is not to be captured. It, it goes where it wants to go. It does the things that it wants to do. It is not yours by yourself. The glory of God is for everyone. So if you think it's all on you, so be it. But I'm telling you that you miss it trying to capture it. I know you're right. You miss it. Not being able to capture. Uh-huh. Jesus. Time for <laughs> so, you know, this is my last point. We may need to get rid of some of the old grudges. You know, this is for me. I don't know about y'all. Stop. You know, because what happens is we don't fix anything when we're turning around blaming everybody else but ourselves. When in all actuality, we have to do the work for the promises to come. If we so busy going, well, it's they fault they didn't do this, and it's they fault they do, we would not, we would not, Johnny, we would not be where we are today if we sat around waiting on what people didn't do. Well, well, we just wouldn't. We wouldn't. We would have missed last year. We would have missed the year before. We would have missed a whole bunch of stuff. If we were sitting around worrying about what people didn't do, instead of you worrying about that, why don't you start doing it? That's my advantage. <laughs> right. You start. You. 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 You, you want prayer done? Start praying. Start praying. That's what happens. You want corporate worship? Start worshiping. Come on, evangelists. <laughs> you you want to end hunger? Feed somebody. You better go down a little. It's simple. It's simple. You want to help end suicide? Call somebody and ask them how they doing. Don't be going. Well, I wonder how she been. You know, she ain't looking too good nowadays. Come out of there. Call them. Ask them. My God. Do something. Do what God is telling you to do, and the promises will start rolling. You think I'm playing try it? We, I triple dog dare you to try it. Do what God tell you to do and bless somebody else and watch everything starts going in. Do something. do something. Do something. If you're doing something with the 
people and the and 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 the surrounding things that are around you, things will begin to happen around you. I know you're right. If it's missing love, put your love. Come say it again. If it's missing if love, it's missing love put, put your love in it. it. Don't wait on somebody. Well, they ain't doing it. Well, well, how would that help? You have to do the work. If you do the work it takes to get the open, to get it open to the promises of God, God wants to bless us with all that we need, but we gotta be in line. To receive the promise. And the last time I checked, love is the first thing on the list. Put your love in it. Okay. Put your love in it. We got a problem with doing that. Because we we expect the love to be rejected because of the experiences. But let me tell you something about God's love. God's love died on the cross and rose three days again, and I didn't even do that. I did everything wrong. He didn't do nothing, and 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 and, and that's that's the kind of love God got for us. God had all these things in place to say we couldn't do this, we couldn't do that. Knew we weren't gonna make it, so He sent us a provision. He knew we would be short, so He stepped in front of you and said, "I know you ain't gonna get this right right now, baby. So I'm gonna step in front." And I'm going to take this hit for you. Because I knew you wasn't able to do it right now. But if you hold on and keep your plug in. If you hold on and keep your plug in. You know how you plug in? You plug in by grace. You plug in by prayer. You plug in by doing the things that God tells you to do. You keep your plug in by being amongst the people who think like you. If they don't think like you, stop hanging out with them. Right. Oh, we got quiet. In here. <laughs> <laughs> if they, I'm gonna repeat it. If they don't think like you, stop hanging out with them. Say Y'all know who I hang out with? Y'all turn around. That's them right there. I hang out with them. I hang out with Johnny, Amina, and Nunu. That's my crew. I hang out. I hang out with her. I hang out. I'm either hanging out to pour on them oh my God. Okay. something that they're not going to get if I don't hang out, or I'm hanging out so they can pour into me. Oh. It's vice versa. Yeah. See, you don't have to. See, here's the thing, and I'm done. You don't have to be all deep to know God's promises. That's right. You don't have to know every verse in the Bible. No, These yeah. babies teach me about God's promises every day. Uh, Jagger said, I don't know how it's going to come, but it's going to come. I, if I got to sleep on the floor in this apartment, I'm going to sleep on the floor in this apartment. Come on. And when come on. it showed up, she was just ready. She said, I don't have to care if I'm... She never complained. Caprice. Let me tell you something. She never complained. She moved every article to her apartment. Yeah. Piece by piece by whoever will pick her up at the moment. Well, I'm going to take these few bags and boxes. And then I'm going to take them too. And she never complains. She said, well, I don't know what they're doing, but I'm just getting there little by little. Little by little. Oh, my God. Here we are. Are you there? <laughs> little by little. I dare you to do little by little. Good God Almighty. I dare you. I dare you to do little by little. That's good. And I'm speaking to myself. Stop trying to run when all you got to do is walk. Stop trying to run. God has a plan and promises made for you. Promises, promises, promises. Get in line with your promises. Amen? Amen. Thank you very much. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the receiving of his word. Amen? Yes, yes Lord. Keep oh. coming. You got to take notes. <laughs> no, not on the keyboard. No, over here. Oh. Oh, Come on, clap our hands for our minister. Our minister, please. Come on, promises, promises, promises. Come on, we can be back there. She has fed us for the next. Guys, we might not have to be back here until doing this. Hey, man, if you are grateful for the word of God, would you do me a favor? Would you clap those hands one more time?
to all of our guests, to all of our, uh, to everyone who came for support. Because one thing Caprice is going to do, she's going to bring, oh, she gonna bring a She's going to bring an Eco Ford 150 into the church. I don't know how she do it. And she only, she got two Nissans. But she's going to make sure everyone gets to the house of God. We are so grateful. Um, we're so grateful. We're grateful to our pastor, Pastor Clayton, for always allowing us to um, mount the desk because we should be grateful for that. Clap our hands for him. Because there are some leaders who are intimidated by the people that they title, right? Yeah, yeah. But he gives us the uh, open opportunity and he gives us um, good critique yes, and good constructive me. criticism. Okay. Gotta make sure you got context when you come behind this desk. So we are so grateful. And we're going to dismiss if everyone can stand. Amen. And if I might ask if there's anybody in the open doors of the church that um, if there's anybody that wants to join today that you removed or you feel like I could, I could stop and catch my breath here for a while, you're more than welcome to come up. If you do not want to come up, if you do not want to come up, you can um, see Brother David Henry. And you can talk to him if you don't want to go through all the protocol. Praise the Lord. And you don't want all the fanfare and hand clap. Praise the God. And we'll open up a new portal. Amen. Amen. To join the church. Amen. Um, also, um, if anyone is in need of prayer, if you just want a prayer request, just put your hand up. If you don't, again, we have a new portal going. If you don't want to come up, um, but we are, we will come to you, but we're covering you in prayer. We are so grateful that you decided to come to us today. And one more time, can we please give a great, can we give God a great round of applause for the word? For the word of promises, promises, promises. Y'all saw I was struggling to come up here because I think we were take, I was trying to get my last little bit of notes. Um, and let's pray out. Father, we thank you for what you've done here today. Thank you that great is your faithfulness. Um, morning by morning by morning um, unto us the new mercies we see. We thank you for what you put into fruition today. We thank you for allowing the word to manifest. We thank you for your promise and that it is yes and it is amen. It is unstoppable. It is undeniable. It cannot be turned around. The, the notion of it cannot be turned over. You hold on to your promises for us, Father. And in your word, you have just 8,000 and some that the evangelist said, Father, but for our lives, you have so much more, Father God. And so we are so grateful that you have something better for us on the horizon, Father God. As the hymn writer said, just as I am without one plea, Father God, we come to you and we say thank you for your promises. Thank you for holding on. Bless us and keep us, Father God. Bless those who have traveled near and far, Father God, to come and support the ministry. Bless those who are um, online, Father God, bless us in our homes and destinations. We are grateful that you have decided to give us your promise, Father God, that even when we can't, when we don't see the promises in our lives, we can open up your book, Father God, and find one of those 8,000 plus scriptures, Father God, because you are God and you do everything in sovereignty. We thank you. Keep us in this day, Father God, as we go to our several destinations and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.